So we are now just potentially a couple months away from Apple's mixed reality VR AR headset. And honestly, there's, there's a lot to be excited about, but there's also a lot of unknowns. But one thing is for sure, and that is that Apple is dead set on augmented reality. We've had VR headsets for a number of years now, but the focus on augmenting the real world is something that not a ton of headsets have done. So yes, Apple is building an enclosed headset that'll go over your eyes, but the end goal is a pair of glasses that you can put on and see things projected on top of the world. But it's gonna be at least another four or five years before the tech is ready for wearable augmented reality. Or at least that's what you might think. Today's video sponsor, Unreal, well, they think they're already there. All right, so if you're gonna design a pair of augmented reality glasses, you want it to be able to do a couple of things. Number one, it should blend in and it should look at least generally like a normal pair of glasses or sunglasses. It should be light enough that you can wear it for long periods of time. It should have displays that project things onto the real world, which means it probably also should track head movements for more accurate immersion. Uh, and it should also be able to connect to a wide range of media and devices that you already have. Now, that's a pretty long list, and I think you'd agree that it's not gonna be simple to achieve. You'd have to miniaturize phone processors, batteries, and displays. But Unreal Air looks like this. That's pretty close to a normal pair of sunglasses, so how did they do this? Well, what I like about the Unreal Air is its simplicity. There's no batteries, there's no cameras, there's no LiDAR, there's no phone processor, there's no wireless streaming. It's very simply a display on your face with a gyroscope for measuring head movements, some speakers in the frames, and it connects via USB-C. Using the Unreal Air is super duper simple. There's a number of different ways that you can use this with different degrees of functionality, but the basic specs of this thing are you have two 1080p displays for each eye. So they're micro OLED, they look really, really sharp and crisp, very deep blacks, which allows them to have that transparency that you want with augmented reality. The FOV is 49 degrees, so these are square displays. It's not gonna completely fill your vision, but it basically looks like having a 130 inch TV in front of you. Now, in its most basic sense, this works like an external display. So whether you have a Mac or a PC or an Android phone or a Steam Deck, a PlayStation, an Xbox, whatever you have, you can plug in with USB-C or with an adapter to HDMI. Now, this adapter is a little bit special because it has a battery in it. Now, that's necessary in some cases for powering this thing. Obviously, over USB-C, you get all the power you need, but HDMI needs a bit of extra boost, so there's a battery in here. But the adapter is a little bit more special than just providing power because the HDMI portion here slides right out, which means that you can use Apple's first-party HDMI to lightning, and then, boom, you've got yourself a way to use this thing with your iPhone. Now, in all of those aforementioned cases, whether it's a game console, an iPhone, a Mac, a PC, what have you, it works like an external display. And that means you can mirror or extend your display. The way that I like to do it is putting the Unreal on top because you can look down at your laptop screen below and put a video or something up top and have that nice big screen, but it's still transparent. You can still see your normal laptop screen. On the iPhone, you can do the same thing with YouTube videos. It works essentially like an AirPlay display. You can still see your normal phone screen, but on the glasses, you'll see a full screen centered video. So that's the most basic user scenario for these things, and it still has a lot of benefits. For example, I was recently on a five hour flight to San Francisco for some video content that you guys will see pretty soon. And instead of watching on the terrible little infotainment screen on the plane or holding my phone up or getting my laptop, which doesn't even fit on the tray table, I just plugged in my phone where I had Netflix downloaded, put on the glasses. The air comes with this light shade that you can use to block out the background right behind your content so that you don't have to worry about other stuff coming through. There's plenty of brightness. I actually found myself using it on the minimum brightness on a dark plane, just for reference. However, Unreal has a couple of other things that they're working on. For example, if you have an Android phone, well, there's a bit more. 
See, on Android, there's an app called Nebula, which allows you to really take advantage of the head tracking capabilities of the Enreal Air. When you plug in the glasses, you can choose AR Space, which is going to launch a virtual home screen effectively, and that is location locked. So you can look around and it wraps all the way around your vision. And when you're in that mode, your phone becomes a trackpad and pointer. So you can grab windows and move them around using the phone's screen and the phone's gyroscope allow you to point and click on things. This actually answers a really big question about how we're all going to cope in this mixed reality world because one of the ways that comes to mind for controlling all of this is of course gestures. But gestures in the air with your hands frankly aren't really there yet. So instead of trying to put in a bunch of sensors to get some very rudimentary hand gestures that don't really work and add a ton of cost, they're just using the phone. However, there are some areas where the Unreal Air already has the functionality that you would frankly want. And that is, quite fortunately for us, over on the Mac. So using AR glasses with a Mac is another one of those classic situations that we're gonna have to navigate over the coming years. The Nebula app that exists on Android has a beta version here on the Mac, but rather than creating that virtual home screen and a very phone-inspired feel, this is designed to do one thing specifically, and that is virtual monitors. Now, I showed you guys earlier how in its most basic form, you can use the Enreal Air as an external monitor. So right now I've got it mirroring my screen. You can also use it to extend your screen. And in that mode, the entire field of view of these screens is going to be your screen. It moves with your head and it basically stays fixed in the center. But with the Nebula app on the Mac, you can create virtual monitors that will stay in place. So when you launch the Nebula app with the glasses connected, you've got a choice between one, two, and three virtual screens. Now, obviously it's hard to show you exactly what all of this looks like, but I did make this little animation which shows you basically what to expect. You've got a location locked center screen with two screens on either side. They're angled around you for better visibility. But the one thing to keep in mind is that cropped in 49 degree FOV. So you don't quite get all of the peripheral vision there. However, However, you can change the way that this screen is formatted. So there's a menu bar here for Nebula. If you hold this center button, it'll reset the position to be centered with wherever you're looking. So you can use that to move the displays around. You can also change the number of screens in real time. And this one is nice. You can change how far away they are, how big they are, and the angle of the side screens. Pretty impressive stuff. And this feature is very similar to what you would be able to do with something like a MetaQuest Pro, except that that costs $1,500 and is a whole head, big headset thing. The Unreal Air costs $380, so less than a third of the cost. And this is something that you can wear on an airplane or a train or on the subway. And that I think is a really good point because the Enreal Air is not trying to be the most advanced, most feature packed set of AR or VR or mixed reality glasses out there. They're not, but this is designed to be A, affordable under $400 and B, not completely insane to use in public. Okay, would you wear these on a plane compared to what other like VR headsets or like the gaming headsets, would you put those on and watch Netflix while you're on a flight? I mean, yeah, it definitely looks more comfortable than the other ones. They're like a little heavy. Honestly, this isn't worse than wearing normal glasses and I wear like glasses just to see. I mean, you'd probably give them a weird look, but it's not that big of a deal. Like. <laughs> I mean, you carried a giant computer through airport security, so you're used to those weird looks. You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> Thank you for the help. <laughs> I mean, this is the debate that we all have to have with ourselves about the future. If mixed reality wearable glasses are going to be a more common thing, 
we either have to get used to looking weird in public or we have to try to make them not look weird in public. Now on a very fundamental level, what the Enreal Air represents is the first truly wearable implementation of this technology. So obviously it's going to take a lot more years of development before this technology becomes as ubiquitous as putting on a pair of glasses and seeing digital things projected onto the physical world. But for $380, with the features that this offers right now, I think the Enreal Air is a really compelling product. And that's not just because they sponsored this video and there's a link in the description below if you wanna buy them. That's because I legitimately have been using these for about a month and I find them to be legitimately useful, especially in situations where I'm traveling. So I'm curious to know what you guys make of this situation. Is this the future? Is Apple's approach? Is Meta's approach? Who do you think is the iPhone of mixed reality? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. This is a super interesting topic and one that I definitely want to explore more. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace.